Photo Key 7 Pro is great at quickly processing single green screen images and is also optimized for professional workflows involving large batches of photos. The basic workflow involves three steps. Step one, import your images. Step two, process your images. And step three, export the final composites. I'm Aaron Patel, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing the second step, processing your images. In particular, we're gonna focus on techniques for batch processing large numbers of images for high volume shoots and event photography. PhotoKey has a massive array of tools to fine tune the result of your cutout, or key, and blend your foreground and background images together. To get the full benefit of batch processing though, you wanna be able to use the same settings on all of your images to avoid the requirement of individual adjustments. When I'm on a shoot, I use one image to make the needed adjustment within the software, and if the setup of our green screen, camera, and lighting is consistent, these settings should work nicely on any other images you shoot. In this project, I have a hot folder set up to auto-import our images. You can learn more about using the hot folder in part one of this workflow series. I've also imported the background I want to use. This is important because it gives me a reference to use when positioning my foreground subject. If we shoot a test image, we can adjust the position to get the subject where we want. There are two ways you could approach this. One is to center the subject in camera and change the position in the software so that an imported subject is where you want them. The second method is to look at your background, decide where you want the subject, and then pose them in that position in camera. Then you don't need to adjust the position in the software and they naturally fall into place. You can work either way depending on which one fits you better. Now, we adjust the key for our test image. Keying, in its simplest sense, is the process of selecting and removing a range of colors from your image. It's important to have a bright, evenly lit backdrop and a good distance between your subject and the backdrop, so the green isn't reflecting onto them and causing a spill. These principles are covered in greater detail in our lighting tutorial on our Learn page, so check it out. Once we have correctly adjusted our key, it's worth importing a second test image just to see how our settings are holding up. If they don't work as well on the second subject, then adjust things as needed. But once you're happy with the results on both images, we're ready to get to work on a large batch. There are two ways you can handle this. The first is complete automation. By default, PhotoKey 7 Pro is set up to use global settings. This means that any adjustment you make will automatically apply to every image you import. If we turn Hot Folder Export on, then every image we shoot is immediately imported, processed with the global settings that we have defined, and exported to the format you have chosen. It requires no interaction. In fact, you need to disable the hot folder if you ever do want to make an adjustment. It's really important to get your settings right before commencing, but it's great for shoots that need you to make lots of images very quickly. The second option is standard batch processing, which lets you select specific images from the list and cull the other ones. So if you're trying out a variety of poses, for example, you only need to export ones you want to keep. It also allows you the opportunity to adjust individual images if that is required. In an event setting where subjects wearing a wide variety of colors come through, it is quite possible that some images will need individual adjustment. The viewer control lets you manage all of the images in your batch. You can move forward or backward through the list of imported images. This icon, lets you add the current image to the batch for export. The star icon lets you tag an image as unique, so you can adjust an individual image separately from the global settings. You can also access all of these controls through the list in the import and export tool sets, where you'll be able to find the add to batch and unique icons for each image. In addition, you can right click to access a contextual menu which is useful for applying these tags to multiple images at once, but if you want to evaluate the images one at a time, the viewer controls are often the most convenient. So you can check the current image, and if you like it, add it to the batch. Advance to the next image. Perhaps we don't like this one, so we won't add it. We'll just move on. The global settings aren't working well on this image. It needs a mask for this area. So we can tag it unique, adjust the key setting a bit, and then add the mask. With masks, there are two methods that can be used. If you create a mask on an image that uses global settings, then it will be applied to every image, and you can use the unique tag to turn it on or off for specific images. If you have a mask that will need to be reused on many images, this is a good approach to take. 
but in most cases, you'll want to tag the image as unique first and then create a mask for it. This second method means that a mask will only exist on the unique image and lets you create the mask specifically for any images that require them. The same two methods apply for text. If you need to reuse a text object over multiple images, create it in the global settings. If you want to use unique text for specific images, then add the unique tag first, then create the text. You can also use unique settings to select different backgrounds for some images if you've already imported multiple backgrounds. The global settings will use a single background for all images, but if you want to use a different background for one, just tag the images unique to contradict the global settings, then switch the background. The client preview window is a fantastic new addition to 7 Pro. It lets you display the final image on a second monitor without the distractions of the photo key interface, so your client can review it for approval. To enable it, click the Show Client Preview Window button and position the preview on the display you wish to use. The preview will only update when you want it to. Adjust the image to your liking, then click the Client Preview Render button to update the preview for your client. If you use this feature often, then you can save your preferences in the Options window. So when you toggle the Client Preview on, it will default to the location that you prefer and even automatically open whenever you launch the software. As we discussed earlier, a key component of working quickly throughout any batch of images is consistency. So to wrap up this tutorial, I wanted to share a few techniques that you can use to ensure consistent, easily processed images. Number one, avoid having your background color on your subject. If you have green on your subject, in front of a green screen, then you'll need to use masks or carefully modified key settings to clean up the results. Either way, it might slow you down. Number two, Keep your green screen evenly lit and bright with no hotspots or shadows. The more even the green screen is, the easier it is to remove without affecting your subject. Check out my lighting guide on the Learn page for a quick guide to a basic setup. Number three, manually white balance your camera for your lighting setup using a gray card or whichever method you feel most reliable. Accurate color is the first step to getting an accurate key. So avoid using auto white balance to ensure that the color is completely consistent throughout your shoot. Number four, keep your camera, backdrop, and subject at a consistent location. I normally use masking tape to mark the floor to help keep my subject in the right spot. Number five, check your depth of field. I'm sure you've already got your subject's eyes in focus, but make sure that your aperture settings keep the entire edge of your subject in focus as well. Soft edges from a shallow depth of field can make it tricky to get a clean edge when cutting out. Ideally, it's great to have your entire subject in focus, but Keeping the focus on the green screen a little bit soft will help even out the lighting as well as any creases. As much distance as possible between the green screen and your subject will help with this. Number six, choose your background in advance. To create a convincing composite, the lighting on your subject needs to match the background they're added into. In order to light your subject properly, therefore, it helps to know what background they will end up in. Choose your background, examine how it was lit, and set up the lights for your shoot to match. These guidelines will help ensure that you can power through large quantities of images very quickly with minimal effort. And once you have all your images processed, you're ready to export them. I'm Aaron Patel for PhotoKey, and I'll be covering exporting in part three of this workflow tutorial series. Thanks for watching.